Hi guys, I'm Cisco Nate and welcome to my tutorial video on how to cluster a pair of 4110 firepowers. So this is Cisco's next generation firewall which includes IDS IPS like capability and the biggest key is centralized management. So there's a few things we have to do first um, and I wanted to show you guys everything from the ground up so you see there's no smoke and mirrors. This is literally the way it will be for you to configure this device. So uh, to start off, I have two firewalls here. One is my A firewall, and the second one here is my B firewall. Lastly, I've got my Firepower Management Center set up here. So first thing is, let's go ahead and log into these devices. Go ahead and log in, and then we'll get to the nitty gritty on what is required and how to set up these devices. So firewall A is logging in, firewall B is logging in. We'll let our FMC sit there till later when we're ready to use it. So first things first is uh, in a cluster with firepower firewall devices, they need to obviously have a few things and that is they need to be on the same FX OS code. The firewall instances that are spun up need to be on the same FTD code. All right, and then there's a few other caveats and requirements I'll get to later as we're going through this, but to check the FX OS version when you log into the web GUI, that is this right here. So version 2.41222. I check my second firewall, it is also the same version. So good, I don't need to do any upgrades, so the same version, awesome. All right, um, next thing is we'll go to interfaces. When you cluster these firewalls, the interfaces need to be identical. So you need to have the same exact ports configured on each or port channels if you're doing a best practice. In this case, I will be deploying a best practice, i.e. redundant uh, instance of these firewalls. So everything I talk about will involve most likely port channels and redundant connectivity. And there are some uh, very specific caveats that we need to cover regarding the switch configuration and I'll get to those later. All right, so first off, uh, we have a management port here. This is the management port that is hosting the FXOS web interface. It's also green here. If you're logged into this web page, this is how you're currently accessing the box. Second thing here is you see the green one, that's Ethernet 1.1, that is green and it has been allocated for management. Now this management port is for firepower threat defense. Whenever you spin up an image, this is the port you will use to access FTD or that FTD will use to communicate with the FMC. Next is uh, we wanna have our data plane and our control plane port channels spun up so that this firewall cluster can talk to each other and the firepower management center and so that it can pass traffic from the trusted and untrusted side for you. So first things first is we have to have a port channel 48 for the CCL, that's the cluster control link. Let's go ahead and add some ports here. I'll go ahead and choose ports 4 and 5. You want to verify that it is enabled, set to cluster type, set the correct speed, in this case it is one gig, duplex and no auto negotiate. Go ahead and click OK here and we'll go to firewall number two and do the same thing. Remember these have to be identical when they're initially set up. So enabled, cluster type, one gig, full duplex, no auto negotiate, ports four and five, identical to the first firewall. All right, we'll come back to the first firewall and set up our data plane now that the control plane has been set up. So I add a new port channel. I'll set it to port channel 10. It is data type. We're gonna set it to one gig in this case, no auto negotiate, and I'll put ports two and three. <coughs> I'll come back to the second firewall and I'll do the same thing. Port channel 10, data type, one gig, no auto negotiate, enable, port two, port three, Okay, so back to the first firewall. Looking at this image, do not freak out at the colors of these buttons. Well, you should, but only under certain circumstances. So management should be green. The management port that you've allocated, when I say management, I'm talking about the type here, Ethernet 1.1, should be green. And the cluster control link will always be green when you're viewing it from FXOS, even if you do not have an instance or logical device already spun up. However, the data plane, the data port channel will be red until you spin up a logical device, which we have not done yet. So as long as your image looks like this, you are doing just fine at this point. 
So we see both of them have the same output right now. They have the same ports configured in the same way. That's great. Now let's talk about one of the caveats real quick. I was talking about earlier is when you look at these devices from the firewall perspective, clustering is supposed to make it look like one device. And that is true for the data plane. Uh, when everything is sending traffic to a clustered set of firewalls, it looks like that traffic is being sent to or through a single firewall. So when you configure the switch for this firewall for port channel 10, you will have, if you have multiple switches stacked, a spanned port channel across multiple switches. That is okay. When it comes to the data, the control plane, the CCL, each firewall needs to have its own separate and distinct port channel coming off of the switch. So what am I talking about here? Uh, while the data plane is port channel 10 and you will have one single port channel 10 on the switch, for each firewall in the cluster, you will have a separate port channel for this cluster control link. So let's go take a look at my switch real quick. Show IP interface brief. You'll see that I have a port channel 10, that's my data plane port channel. And then I have a port channel 48. That is the port channel that matches the port channel 48 on firewall A. And then I have port channel 49. And 49 is for my firewall B. Don't forget that port channels do not need to match from one end of the connection to the other. However, the VLAN does if you want data to pass correctly. So the port channel being different number is okay in this case. All right. <clears throat> Now that we've gone through that, let's go back to our firewall and spin up our first logical device to create this cluster. We click add device on the top right here. You wanna give it a relevant name so it's easy to identify. So I say, this is my A string of FTD code. I'm choosing 630 uh, code version. That's the latest one we have. And I want it to be in a cluster. And because this is the first firewall, I click create new cluster and I hit okay. And it charges along and starts creating the instance. Wait a second here. <coughs> All right, you can see port channel 48, port channel 10 has been allocated. We do not need any of the other ports over here on the left. The port channel 10 and 48 are what's needed for this cluster. I'm gonna click on that little box here to configure it. When you're spinning up a cluster, it needs a chassis ID and a site ID. So a site ID is essentially your virtual firewall cluster instance. So this is my first one. I can just say it's site ID one. This is my firewall A, so this is my first firewall in the cluster, They're my first chassis in this cluster. I'm gonna set just a random key in this case, I'm gonna choose Cisco. This cluster key is how the cluster knows when to allow other firewalls to join the cluster. That password has to be correct. And I'm gonna call this my firewall 41, Firepower 4110 cluster. Now the management interface, this is for the FTD management. This is ethernet 1.1. So I've chosen that and the CCL subnet is not super important. It just needs to be a uh, 10, zero, and then the last two subnets do not matter. You can make this really anything you want, except for two, which you can look up. I don't remember off the top of my head right now. All right, under settings, registration key. Now this is a key it's going to use to register with the FMC. And in this case, I'm also going to set it to Cisco for ease of use. And then the password here is the admin user password for the device. So in this case, I've got my admin user password. For you, it will be different. Now the firewall management center IP, that is the FMC. And in this case, I have it on a different subnet. So I'm going to go ahead and take this IP here and plug it in down here. 192.168.20.82. I'm gonna put this firewall in routed mode. Um, if you have a choice here and you want flexibility, routed is the best that allows you to do routed firewall as well as a bump in the wire IPS. Now, if you choose transparent mode, you cannot do a routed interface, but when you're in routed mode, you can do routed or bump in the wire IPS. So if you have this in question, you haven't figured it out yet, just go with routed for now. We can skip the rest of these settings. Obviously, if you have this information, you'll populate it at the time. 
We're going to go ahead and give our firewall an IP that I have allocated from this subnet already. For firewall A, I just up the IP once. And then I've already accepted the agreement for this code version, so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK now. We're not done yet. So that was just hitting OK to save your configuration options. In order for this to actually provision, we click Save in the top right. And off we go. Now I'm going to move to firewall B in the string and go through this process as well, but it's slightly different for every member you join after creating the cluster. So I'm going to go ahead and click Add Device here. And it's going to start off the same way. I'm going to go ahead and give it a different name, Firepower 4110B FTD. Firepower Threat Defense Code. I'm going to choose 6.3 because the image version has to match again. I'm going to say it's a cluster. And in this case, I'm going to say join the existing cluster. And then I'm going to copy the config of the already existing firewall to quickly bootstrap configuring this guy. And that's going to pre-populate some of the options for you. I'm going to hit OK. And then it is going to prompt me to enter the cluster config. It says copy cluster details, slightly misleading, but let's go back to our firewall that we're already spinning up. You can see here it is in the process of installing. This is good. Uh, and while it's doing that, you can do this without harming the implementation. Over here on the right hand side is the button that looks like a door with an arrow. It says show configuration. Go ahead and click on that. Highlight the config inside this box, copy it, and then come back to the cluster member that you're trying to add and paste that config and hit OK. That's going to go ahead and parse this output and pre-populate some of the fields, and then we'll be able to finish populating the rest, which are like the IP for this second firewall instance and a few other minor details. All right, so you can see port channel 10 and 48 here. Let's click on the FTD box. <coughs> This is site one, um, because that's the cluster we're trying to form. And this would be firewall number two in the cluster. So we're gonna put two there. And then enter the Cisco cluster key, because that's what I entered before. It's not always Cisco, it's whatever you set on the first one. Go through here and do the same thing. Cisco is what I set the registration key to previously. And then our own admin user password. Whatever that happens to be in your instance. The rest of this is blank, it already has the FMC, and it's already set to routed. Great. And it already has a subnet mask in the gateway. So now we just need to give it an IP. Again, one up from the current FXOS IP, and the agreement has already been agreed to. Hit OK. All right, that's saved our config, but we're not done yet. Let's go ahead and click Save, and this will actually start provisioning this instance now. It's going to take a little bit here. While that's happening, let's go back and check our firewall A. Okay, it's still installing, and this is actually normal. It takes a little while for these firewalls to get spun up. Once they're spun up, though, they're rock solid. Fantastic piece of software. At this point, it's probably a good time to go get a cup of coffee, sit back, kick your feet up.
Okay, just checking back in on this now, you can see it's actually in the process of starting the firewall. This is great. That means it's made it past the installing phase of uh, installing the image and getting ready to start the firewall. So we're doing well. Second firewall is also starting. That's great. That means no hiccups. We're well on our way. And soon enough, we'll be registering with the FMC. You will have your first fully functional firepower cluster. All right, fantastic. So as you can see, firewall A is now online uh, and it is going to be fetching more information periodically here to update the display. It is not fully online yet, but it's, it's almost there. <clears throat> so there you go. You can see that it's now updated the management URL. Let's go ahead and check our interface status. There we go. All right, the firewall is now online. All of the interfaces are green because it now has an FTD image running. So our data plane port channel, Ethernet 1, 2, and 1, 3 are now green. Uh, so this is fantastic. Let's go ahead back to our logic device and check the interfaces here. <coughs> Let's expand the details and you can see it is in the cluster. It is designated as a master. The cluster IP out of the 10.0.0.0 subnet we allocated is 1.1. One, one. This is based on the chassis ID and the site ID. Uh, that's how it allocates which uh, IP it gets on the CCL cluster control link. And you can see that it's targeting the FMC as its management 
Perfect, so let's go over and check the second firewall now. Okay, the second firewall is still in the starting process. That's good, we'll give it a few more minutes there. Okay, great, it says online here and it'll continue updating shortly. It does take a minute, like I said before, to fully come online. So while it says online, it has not finished starting up all services or configuring itself yet. You have to give it like another minute or two, but for the most part, it is good. Let's go check our interfaces. Again, not quite fully online, so these are gonna say suspended. Don't freak out, it's okay. They'll come online in a minute here as long as your switch was configured correctly. Let's go back to logic device and wait for it to update. Perfect, so the CCL is up. You can see it is now in the cluster and it is a slave. So everyone except for the master will be a slave. You can see that this is chassis number two and site one. So it's 2.1, it auto assigned a new IP in the CCL subnet. And then it's also targeting the same FMC, perfect. Let's go check our interfaces now that this FTD instance is up and running. And there we go. It is updated all of the interfaces, our management, our data port channel, and our CCL port channel interfaces are green. We are green and green, both in a cluster, both happy. Fantastic. Now, since these guys are both up, they're both in the cluster, they're both happy, it is now time to officially join it to the cluster. Or, uh, sorry, join it to the FMC. So let's log into our FMC here, admin credentials. <coughs> Now in order to manage a 6.3.0 FTD box, your FMC also needs to be version 6.3. So the first thing I wanna do is come over here to help about and verify that our version is, oh, 6.3.0, perfect. All right, so we wanna to come to devices. <coughs> you look here, we can see there's a few other instances of firewalls being managed, but we're gonna go ahead and add our cluster to this. So the first thing is, uh, you'll notice there is no add cluster. Uh, the way this works if you, is you have to add the device. So let's click add device. We're gonna add the master, 168.25.171. 171 was the FTD management IP. Firepower, 4110A FTD. Registration key was Cisco, that is what I set originally. We're gonna leave it out of a group right now. We're gonna give it a default access control policy. And this is where your licensing is. You just select the ones because these are smart license and hit register. Now you can see in the status here in the background, the toast is popping up saying that it's starting the registration, even though this screen is not giving you that type of uh, fidelity in the updates.
Okay, now as you can see up here in the details, adding the master uh, started and created the cluster. And while doing that, the master told it, I have a second cluster member and here's the IP. So that is now also being automatically registered. This is an improvement from the old 623 code where each one had to be added manually and then you had to create the cluster out of them. So just give it time. It serially adds the rest of the cluster members and once this is completed, you will have a successful cluster here. And there we have it. We have a healthy Firepower 4110 cluster. Thanks for watching the video. After the cluster is joined and been formed on the Firepower Management Center here, it will then do a quick look at the device and start to deploy the config, in this case, the default policy we assigned to the device.